welcome back so in last lecture we have seen that how to plot the mode shapes like mode 1 mode 2 and mode 3 so here we got one crossing and here we got two crossings so we learned how to plot the mode shapes and we have calculated natural frequencies that those are omega 1 omega 2 and omega 3 and we have also calculated mode shapes omega uh, u1 u2 and u3 so now I uh, start from here see here what I have written is modal matrix so what is modal modal matrix modal matrix is if you write your mode shapes in this particular pattern in a matrix form if you write your mode shapes like u1 u2 and u3 then this particular matrix is known as modal matrix remember this is a 3 cross 3 matrix and this is very important so it will be useful further so remember this one this is known as modal matrix so now come to the second step our first step was to calculate the natural frequencies and mode shapes or eigenvectors now our second step is principle of orthogonality okay principle of orthogonality so what orthogonality means it means simply that two vectors vector ui vector ui and uj these two vectors are perpendicular to each other that's the simple meaning of orthogonal orthogonal means perpendicular to each other so if i am taking ith mode shape or ith mo or modal vector or eigen vector and jth eigen vector then transpose of one and product with another must be equal to one if i equal to j that means if i equal to j means see here let me take i equal to one so u1 transpose into u1 this must be equal to one if these two modes are orthogonal remember provided these two modes are orthogonal then only we will get this one equal to one otherwise we will get some different value and if we take i not equal to j that means if i am taking one here and two here in that case this must be equal to zero then only we can say that u1 and u2 are orthogonal to each other so let us take in our case in this numerical we have calculated u1 u2 and u3 so let us find that whether our modes are orthogonal or not so in co in our case i am taking i equal to 1 and i am calculating u1 transpose into u1 that means u1 transpose is this one 1 2.469 and 3.36 and product of this one is with u1 so u1 is this one so you will see that this is not equal to 1 so i can see here that this vector or eigen vector is not orthogonal with this one or with respect to her, uh, the vector self right so i can con conclude that modes are not orthogonal so the very important thing we have to do here is we have to make these two vector orthogonal to each other so while making these two vectors orthogonal we have to take help from either mass matrix or stiffness matrix remember this is again very important concept what i am telling is we have come to know that these two vectors are not orthogonal so we have to make them orthogonal to make them orthogonal we have to take help from either mass matrix or stiffness matrix remember if I am making these two vectors orthogonal by taking help from mass matrix then I will say these two vectors are orthogonal corresponding to mass matrix or with respect to mass matrix and if I am taking help from stiffness matrix to make these two vectors orthogonal then I will say these two vectors are orthogonal with respect to stiffness matrix so that what i have written over here if modes are not orthogonal we can make 
them orthogonal with respect to either mass matrix or stiffness matrix so let us see how to make them orthogonal so if i am going to take mass matrix to make uh, u1 and uh, u1 orthogonal to each other then i will calculate first this one this product i will calculate that is u1 transpose into mass matrix into u1 so this is our u1 transpose and this is u1 and i have taken here mass matrix that is 3 0 0 0 2 0 and 0 0 1 so after multiplying i got this value because this is a this is a 1 cross 3 matrix this is 3 cross 3 and this is 3 cross 1 right so i must get 1 cross 1 so i will get one single value that is 26.49 i got in this particular case and let me give some name to this one that is m11 so name of this m11 is generalized mass or model mass remember this is generalized or normalized or model mass because we are doing model analysis so i will give the name to this mass as model mass also right so this is m11 how we got this m11 while taking this one as one this one as one and taking here mass matrix so can we get m22 also yes of course we can get if i take u2 transpose m u2 that will be m22 similarly i can calculate m33 or if i take instead of mass matrix here if i take a stiffness matrix then i will get k11 k22 and k33 also that will be model stiffness or generalized stiffness okay so now come back to the procedure to make these two vectors orthogonal so i got this value so we will start from here now after getting this value what i will do i will divide that particular vector i'm telling i'm telling you divide i will divide that particular vector and that particular vector here is u1 so i will divide this u1 by square root of m11 that is square root of 26.49 so what was your, your vector u1 that vector u1 is this one 1 2.464 and 3.3615 so this is a vector u1 this one and i will divide this values this one 1 divided by root of 26.49 2.469 divided by root of 26.49 and similarly this one so i will get one another value and that another vector and that another vector is u n1 so here n stands for again normalized or orthogonal you can also see normalized right so how can i get normalized or orthogonal mode shape by dividing the mode shape with square root of m11 that is m11 is nothing but this one this one u1 transpose into m into u1 right similarly we can calculate un2 and un3 also and similarly if we write this u1 u2 u3 in a matrix form that is un1 un2 un3 so tell me what will be the name of this matrix because i have already told you this is again very important matrix in previous case i have mentioned here u1 u2 and u3 so that matrix was model matrix right so this matrix name is orthogonal model matrix orthogonal model so simply one name will add here orthogonal because now these vectors are orthogonal so if i'm claiming that these vectors are orthogonal then i have to check also but i have mentioned you that these vectors are orthogonal with respect to mass matrix because i have divided by here m11 square root right so here i will check this one see here i have calculated here u n1 that is uh, this is known as orthogonal mode shape with respect to mass matrix right so let me check this one so i'll find this one now this value un1 transpose into mass matrix into un1 so if i will calculate this one then i will get surely one because now this vector that is un1 is orthogonal to 
u n one with respect to mass matrix. Is it clear? So this is how we can uh, you know uh, we can convert a mode shape into uh, orthogonal mode shape. Now <laughs> let us come to the next point. That is, uh, I this one I have already explained you. Like we can write this all orthogonal mode vectors or orthogonal eigenvalues. That's u n one, u n two, and u n three in form of a matrix. That matrix is known as orthogonal model matrix. So now, what are the properties of this particular matrix, which is having a three cross three, uh, its units three cross three dimensions, right? So what will be the property of this matrix? So observe here. If I'm can if I calculate U n transpose into mass matrix into U n, so remember this U n can be U n one, U n two, or U n three. So this n is again a three cross one vector. So U n is a three cross one vector, right? U n one, U n two, U n three. So this is one cross three. Vector that is u n one, u n two, and u n three, and u n one again is a three cross one vector, right? So I will get a three cross three matrix. Observe here how I will get a three cross three matrix over here. See here, what is u n? U n is this one, u n one, u n two, u n three. So tell me what is the dimension of this matrix? Dimension of this matrix is This matrix. So observe here, U N one. Where is U N one? U N one is this one. U one divided by some value. What is U one? A three cross one matrix, right? U one is a three cross one matrix. This is U one. Yes, U one. So this is a U one which is having a three cross one dimension, right? So U N one is a three cross one. So U N one is three cross one. So three elements will come. Then again three elements. Then again three elements. So what is the dimension of U N? That is that is three cross three. So three cross three got transpose. That will also be three, uh, three cross three, and this is three cross three, and this is also three cross three. So we will get one three cross three matrix. So remember this property. If you calculate this one, this will be a identity matrix. And if you calculate this one with respect to st stiffness matrix, then you will get a matrix which is diagonal, and off diagonal terms will be uh, zero, and diagonal terms will be omega one square, omega two square, and omega three square. So I can write this matrix like this also. Like these terms will be omega square, and rest of the terms will be zero. So now solution. Can be written as x t equal to sum of all the products of this one i equal to one to n, where i is degree of freedom. So if you, uh, my system is having here three degree of freedom, then this will be u n one q one plus u n two q two plus u n three q three. Now our x is the displacement of mass. Now remember here I am replacing this x one. Or x two or x three with some another coordinate which is q one, q two or q three. Okay, so here x will be replaced by some another coordinate that is q one or q or q two or q three, which is known as model coordinate. Model coordinate or coefficient, right? And this matrix is already we know orthogonal mode matrix. Okay. So you can see here, x is a vector that is x one, x two, and x three can be written as u n one q one plus u n two q two plus u n three q three. So x vector can be written as u n into q vector. So what is the dimension of this x vector? That is three cross one. What is the dimension of this matrix? U n matrix that is model matrix or orthogonal model matrix that is three cross three. What is the dimension of Q? That is three cross one. Okay, so remember this one. So now we will solve the given problem that we have taken in terms of Q. We will calculate the assumed deflection or displacement or assumed coordinate in terms of Q.
okay so that part i will consider in the next lecture thank you